What's up guys? Today we're going to go over the Skulk Sensor. Um, I learned about these yesterday, so that just shows where I am mentally. Um, I hope to explain a little bit more how they work, um, some of their quirks and how you might be able to use them, as well as uh, some tips in order to use them for what most of us want to use them for, which are uh, sound activated doors and other things. So first, just talking about the uncalibrated uh, variant, which doesn't have the amethyst. The one I'm holding in my hand is the calibrated version, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, this cloak sensor can detect sounds within a eight block spherical um, area. So if I go over here, it's not gonna detect any sounds. If I go to within eight blocks, it will be able to detect them. Um, and I say spherical, as in it's not going to be like diagonal on the sides, it will actually look like a circle. Um, and I, you know, I could draw it out, but it's basically just you can test it and it'll show you where it'll hear. Um, now it'll stay on after it detects a sound for a certain amount of time. Uh, I believe it's two seconds, and then it will shut off, and and then it has a cool uh, a cooldown, right? And the reason for the cooldown, and if you notice this, it will um, like have a little right there. It has a little bit of a different animation there to show you where the cooldown is. And the reason for that is if you're powering something, um, such as a piston, it will make it where the piston retracting doesn't repower the skulker. Because um, I can imagine that'd be really annoying. You just have infinite loops constantly, and that would be impossible to deal with. Now, the power level on the skulk sensor depends on how close you are, or how close the noise was uh, to the sensor. So if I'm right next to it, and you'll see that this is really bright. Um, like a power level of 15. Whereas if I go over here, you'll notice that it's a lot dimmer. Um, and like if I brought this all the way over, it wouldn't it wouldn't reach really. Or like if I'm like way over here. Yeah, it doesn't even reach to the edge. So the power level that it outputs depends on the uh, distance to the sensor, which can be used for potentially for something. Um, if you don't want to use that functionality and you just want it to be any sound, you can just put a repeater and then it will be maximum signal strength automatically. Now the calibrated sensor, on the other hand, uh, which is on the right here, will do the same thing, but it can do uh, a lot more and it gives you more options. Um, so the first thing that it does better is it also just detects sounds instead of an eight block radius, it's a 16 block radius. So way over here, it's able to hear that, where I can see that this one is not detecting me over here, right? Um, so it has a much higher range. Um, it also works a lot faster. So if I put two repeaters here and then I just like jump, it will end up turning off faster and it can also detect vibrations faster. Um, you know, like this one takes longer to turn off and on and this one takes a lot shorter to turn off and on. Now, the cool thing about the calibrated sensor is that you can actually filter out different types of noise. Um, and basically you can select a certain type of noise that you want it to listen to and it will ignore everything else. Um, the way you do that is on this little side here, there's only one, um, that has this little like crystal input thing. Um, if you put a specific power level into that, so like if I just put a repeater and I attach this to it, it will basically tell it to only listen to a certain type of noise. So now you can see that it's completely ignoring us. Um, and if you input something here, the output will just be on one of the other sides. So you can see that's completely ignoring us. Um, it's not outputting anything. I can jump, I can do whatever. Um, I think a power level of one is player footsteps, uh, which I think I can do with a comparator. Yeah, give me one second. Okay, yeah, that's a power level one. Okay. Um, so now you can see that's listening to us again. Um, but if I spawn in an animal, or potentially used a piston, it probably won't listen to that at all. Right, so it's ignoring this now, whereas if I didn't input anything, it will listen to everything. I'll put a list of what the power levels correspond to what uh, sound types in the description. So something that is extremely convenient with both of the types, um, I'll just delete this one because it doesn't really matter which one you're using, is that wool and carpets will actually dampen sound um, in particular, you can if you can see the little particle thing that flies from the player to the skulker, um, that can get blocked by wool, right? So if I do this, um, 
it'll get blocked. Like me just walking around doesn't do it anymore. Whereas now it'll, it'll do it. Um, so you can kind of use the wool to like directionate, um, the sensor or, you know, kind of filter out exactly what direction it's going to listen from, um, do, you know, extraneous stuff. If I have a piston over here doing things, um, like if this is going and doing stuff, I can put a wool wall here and it will no longer care about what's going on over here. So that's really convenient. So like if you want to make something where you're walking on the ground, um, you can put like a wall here and then just put normal non-wool blocks on the top like this. And then we can see that it can still hear us here, but it won't hear us down here. This would be like underground or something. Um, so you can basically choose the direction that's going to listen from. Um, so that's extremely convenient. But if you're going to use it for automatically powering a door or automatically powering something else while there's sound, um, there's still the problematic part where that it will uh, turn off and on constantly. Like if I'm continuously walking, it still has a cooldown. It still has a turn down, uh, turn off phase. So it's going to be annoying if you need it to act as like a lever where it's going to be constantly on while there's still sound and then only turn off when there's no sound for a while. Um, the way around that is, this is bugging me, um, is you can basically make just a, a timer with repeaters. Um, and the way I would do that is I just bring out the redstone signal. Actually, I need that. And then we can just make a giant chain of repeaters, right? Uh, this was the cheapest way I could figure out how to do this. Um, I couldn't figure out a cheaper way. Uh, unfortunately, if there's different ways, uh, please let me know. But essentially, you can do a chain of repeaters like this with redstone in between all of them. And I think, I think you might need seven. I'll need to, I'll need to figure that out again. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Get rid of that one. Um, you put them on max duration, and then we just bring this wire out um, using repeaters, sorry. And these can be uh, min duration repeaters. I don't really think it matters what duration these ones are. And this is just to block the signal from going around and making an infinite loop. And then we connect all of these together. Um, and then you want to just add a repeater somewhere in the middle here to make sure that this signal can make it all the way down here, right? Um, and what this effectively does is it just mediates the signal that is outputting from the skulker um, in order to make it where it doesn't uh, flicker off and on, right? So if I was like having a door attached, so like if I had, you know, for example, a piston door, um, you know, let's say these are sticky pistons or something. Uh, I can actually use sticky pistons on all I'm just being lazy. Um, and then if we're going to make a door, we want to make this inverted as well. Um, you know, so I'm flying, it's off. Um, oh. It heard the pistons and it turned itself on. I'm going to move it and then put wool in front of it so that it doesn't do that. Okay. I'll put it here. So now we can see that if I'm walking, it'll open the door and the door will be like here-ish. Um, and it won't just like be annoying and turn off and on again um, because this timer thing is mediating that. So it'll remain open. I can walk through the door and then only when all of the sound is gone for a while, it will turn off again, right? And then if I come back to it, it'll reopen it. The response time is relatively quick. Um, and this, you know, gets rid of the issue where like, you'll be walking through it and it'll close on you. Or if you have more complex doors, it'll actually break them because the signal is being weird. All right, guys, that'll be it for this video. Um, it was relatively short. Uh, I didn't really want to go over super gory detail, uh, but I just wanted to explain how they work and how you might use them. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.